testing the regression assumptions for moderation with Hayes process model number one. In general, most statistical procedures have assumptions, and if those assumptions are violated, you can get seriously wrong test results. This applies as well to a moderation analysis with the process. Process model one is based on a multiple regression. We have the independent variable, the moderator, and the interaction between both variables predicting the dependent variable. And if you have an additional covariate, that goes into the multiple regression too. And since it's a multiple regression, all the assumptions apply that are relevant for multiple regression. Let's start with normality. In regression, the normality assumption is an assumption about the normality of the residuals, not about the normality of the variables. For that reason, you can only check this assumption after having run the regression, because only then you have residuals. You run the regression, you save the residuals, and then you test normality with a histogram, or a QQ plot, or a PP plot, or Shapiro-Wilk test, or looking at skewness in kurtosis. Whether you use SPSS or R, you have a lot of different options for testing normality. There is an alternative to this approach. Instead of testing normality, you could use bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is an estimation method that is robust against violations of the normality assumption. So with bootstrapped results, you don't need to test it, provided you have a sample size of at least 50. Below that, bootstrapping is not reliable enough. With process for SPSS or R, you can request additional bootstrapping the result for all model coefficients. And then, at the end of the output, you get an additional table with the bootstrap results for the multiple regression you use for moderation analysis. And then, looking at the confidence intervals, if those don't include zero, then they are significant. If you test normality and the normality assumption is violated, then you could again use bootstrapping, you could try a variable transformation, or in a larger sample you could rely on the central limit theorem. In most cases I would use bootstrapping. Second assumption, homoscedasticity, that is equal variance of the residuals. To check whether you have homoscedasticity, you first need to run the regression, and then you save the predicted values and the residuals. You can test homoscedasticity by looking at a scatter plot with the predicted values on the x-axis and the residuals on the y-axis. A funnel shape pattern would indicate a violation of the homoscedasticity assumption, that is, that you have heteroscedasticity. Here too, there are alternatives. You could use robust methods that don't assume homoscedasticity. You could use heteroscedasticity consistent standard errors or robust standard errors, HC3 or HC4. You can request them in process. Or you can request bootstrapping, because bootstrapping is also fairly robust against violation of the homoscedasticity assumption. And if you use one of those techniques, you don't have to check homoscedasticity. What can you do if the assumption is violated? Using robust standard errors or using bootstrapping. Next assumption, linearity. A linear regression assumes a linear relationship between the predictor variables and the criterion variable. So in this case, you look at scatter plots between the independent variable and the dependent variable, the moderator and the dependent variable, the interaction and the dependent variable, and if you have covariates, then for each covariate between it and the dependent variable. There's one exception. If you have a binary independent variable and or a binary moderator, for those you don't have to check that assumption. Linearity is only relevant for a metric predictor. And those scatter plots should show a roughly linear shape or no shape at all, just unsystematic scattering. What you don't want to see there is a U-shaped form or an inverted U-shaped or some other systematically curved shape. If the assumption is violated, you could use polynomial regression. For that, you would go outside of process. That is, you would run a regression with SPSS or R. Next assumption, independence. One of the most important assumptions as in general in regression is the assumption of the independence of the observations. Violations of this assumption can happen in cross-sectional data if you have observations nested within groups. For instance, students nested within classes. Violations can also happen in longitudinal data if you include more than one time point of the same measure in your analysis. There are no statistical tests for checking independent. The Durbin-Watson test that is sometimes used for that isn't really applicable outside of time series data. So you have to look at the sampling process, whether there is a nested data structure in your sampling, for instance subjects within groups or time points nested within persons. If the assumption is violated, you could go to multi-level modeling or to run a moderated regression with so-called cluster robust standard errors that correct for the effects of clustering. Next assumption, no strong multicollinearity. Normally you test that by running the regression and requesting variance inflation factors. And if those are below 10, then you don't have high multicollinearity. 
As an alternative, if you don't want to rebuild the regression outside of process, you could look at the correlations. If the correlations between all predictors, including the interaction, are below 0.70, then you should be fine. If you have strong multicollinearity, you should look at this paper by O'Brien 2007. Because O'Brien makes the case that especially if you have significant results, then a violation of the multicollinearity assumption isn't that problematic. Finally, you should have no important outliers. Outliers can bias the results of regression and thereby of your moderated regression. In order to check that assumption, you run the regression. For diagnosing outliers, you could use residuals, you could use Cook's distance, you could use diff beta. And by looking at those measures, decide whether you have outliers or not. If you don't want to rebuild the regression outside of process, an alternative would be to look at univariate box plots for your variables. But this is not as good as a full diagnostic check for outliers, because this way you can only can find univariate outliers. But there may be outliers that seem unproblematic on a univariate basis, but show an extreme combination of values. But I think looking at univariate box plots is better than nothing when it comes to outliers. What to do if the assumption is violated? You could run a sensitivity check. That is, you run your model twice. The first time with all observations and the second time without the outliers. And if you get basically the same results, not exactly the same numbers, but the same key results, whether the results are significant and not and so on, then you know that the results were not heavily influenced by outliers. The second possibility would be outright deleting the outliers, but you can lose important information. So I definitely prefer the sensitivity check. That's it for regression assumptions for process model one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.